Good morning, what is up guys? And once again, hello from a lovely Tenerife. Now, yesterday I had a fantastic time in the 570 GT uh, and uh, during dinner last night, uh, we got talking about the proposition of where might you put your cash? Because right now, the price of a fairly well spec 570S uh, or a 570 GT uh, is not dissimilar to that of a uh, well spec relatively low mileage 650S. But what also got me thinking, and in my eyes, what has, has sort of brought the 650S back to the sort of forefront again, is the fact that everyone's talking about 675LT, 675LT Spider, but the reality of, of it is, unless you were one of the lucky 500 to be invited to buy one, you can no longer get that car. So right now, technically, McLaren's for 650S is actually their flagship car, which you can still buy. So today, we've picked up the keys, and uh, yeah, I'm just gonna jump in, in this thing and see you know, where the sort of difference is between uh, Sports Series and Super Series. Sports Series being uh, 570 range, Super Series being 650 range, and also looking at this, the 650S, and thinking, do you need a 675LT? So, let's jump in and check it out. an older car to the 570 range but just being in this thing it feels like a proper thoroughbred supercar uh, it's just the power there's just the power is absolutely insane yesterday if you've watched my uh, 570 GT video you'll see my reactions to the power and acceleration of that thing and it truly is savage um, which is all the more gobsmacking that this thing is delivering it with so much more punch. It's, it, this is a true supercar. <laughs> it's fantastic experience. Now, this isn't a fair comparison. It's not really about which is the better car. Obviously, so many of these, you know, things are very subjective and personal, but for me, it's very hard to ignore that this now is McLaren's flagship car. This is the only car that you can buy that is the top of the range from these guys and a low mileage one with a very good spec is currently a very similar price to a new 570. So where would the money go? now? you get a hell of a lot of car in the 650S. You gotta remember that when this car launched, it was a bit of a game changer. It had so much active aero. You know, when you slam on the brakes in this and you're looking in the rear view mirror, that big wing comes up as an, as an air brake and it just adds so much drama to the whole experience of being in it. Things like that add up. And of course, you know, in the Super Series, you also have the hydraulically linked suspension. Now, I didn't think that would make as much of a difference to the driving experience as it does. This thing rides like no other car. Laterally, there is basically no body roll at all. And then it rides bumps like a magic carpet. It's just witchcraft. I don't know how these guys have done it. One thing, when I was in Geneva uh, in February this year, it was the first time that I saw and heard, importantly, a 570S and a 650S next to each other. And them driving at the same time and actually leaving a set of traffic lights at exactly the same time. 
Now, from the outside, I'm gonna say this, that the 570 sounds better. It's a better sounding car. From the inside, having driven these two cars now back to back, yesterday, the 570 GTI I drove was upgraded with the uh, sports exhaust. Inside, with the roof down, I'm gonna say this thing sounds better. I mean, the power is, you cannot compare. It, it is, it, it's a shocking experience. We've got it in a uh, sport setting, traction's in normal. You plant your foot out of a corner in this, you better be ready because, well, because that, <laughs> because it's like someone has strapped you to a rocket. It's a fabulous thing. And hit, listen to it. Like, come on, it's not like this thing sounds tame. So, I've actually learned something in the last few days more about myself and what I like out of a car. <laughs> Sorry, well, we're up now in some nice twisty roads. And it's just, well, as you can see, it's taking my attention swiftly away from trying to talk to you guys and convey what's happening here. Let's watch this. <laughs> wow. Yes, that is different gravy, baby. Wow. What an, exp what, what an experience this thing is. The last few hours spending time in the 570 series and this car I think has actually told told me more about me more about what I like out of a car interestingly the 570 GT has across the board so far appealed more to everyone else in our group uh, Seb and Sam took out a 570S earlier and they're still saying that they would take the GT. Interestingly, I was 30 yards out of the hotel yesterday, the 570 GT, and you know I was straight into track mode. I wanted manual gear shifts, and I straight away wanted to compare that car with the S. And I have to say, for me, the experience up in the mountains on tight, twisty roads in the GT, while it was fabulous, I had a big smile on my face. I still felt that I wanted that little bit more more power, tighter turning, um, and I'm not personally so fussed about having a car uh, which is really soft and uh, plush. When I get in a, a supercar, I want it to be super. I want it to be an event, an occasion. I've been in this car, you know, all of 15 minutes, McLaren have laid out some fantastic roads again for me and I think I'm already kind of sold into which direction I would go. This thing is a step change, it is a game changer. One of the things which immediately jumped out to me when I jumped in the 650S is that it did feel a little bit dated compared with the 570. Now, that really depends on how important it is to you as a driver and how much you interact with the car. Um, I'm being distracted because I have a Shmi behind me in a 675 LT Spider. Very appropriate because I'm about to talk about the fact that the whole industry right now is talking about nothing other than a 675 LT and yet you can't actually buy one which makes this car all the more significant because right now, if you want the flagship McLaren, I'm sat in it. You can still go out there and buy one. You can still spec it exactly how you want. I've said before, for me, the benchmark of a great car is how big a smile it puts on your face. This thing is giving me smiles in buckets. So much so, I really want one. Anyway, unfortunately, it is starting to rain a bit, but, it's a great time to demonstrate the roof because of course this car is pretty much two cars in one with it having a full carbon tub roof off or roof on the rigidity in this thing is still fantastic and of course when it rains just bring it back up again you can actually fold the roof back up and down up to uh, i think
think it's 30 kilometers an hour. So you don't have to stop, but there you go. 650 coupe. <laughs> okay, what's really cool is all of a sudden with the roof up, you're hearing all the turbo noises. And it sounds really mysterious. In fact, if anything, it sounds better with the roof on. Also, cool feature, because it's a, it's a spider, this rear glass panel here, you can drop it down, just that glass panel. So not only is it nice and cool, but the engine noise all of a sudden is starting to come through. You can hear the exhaust more, you can hear the engine more, and it's, it's a really nice touch that just because you've had the roof up, you don't have to drown out that sound. That's really cool, that's a great feature. I love that. In 100 meters at the roundabout, take the first exit. Okay, I shall do that. Exit the roundabout. I'm exiting. In 600 meters, This is next level. Totally different ball game entirely. So, I got into this car, and the objective was, you know, how does it compare in terms of 570 series? Because, as I mentioned at the start, pricing of low mileage, one of these, is in a very similar space. But also, has this car become more relevant because as fantastic as 675 is, you can't really get one. I think this is their superstar. You gotta, from both ends of the spectrum, this thing does 80% of what a 675 does for half the price. It doesn't matter because you can't get one anyway. And on the other end, it's, I'm gonna say, a, a much more superior supercar experience than the 570 range. Now, that doesn't mean you necessarily want one instead of a 570. Ultimately, these things are very personal. My approach to supercars is, which one does it for you the most? Which one puts that smile on your face the most? In 300 meters, continue on to Alvinida Malpais. Thanks, Google. For me, I like my supercars to be super. And I gotta say, this 650S is definitely more of a supercar, more of a supercar experience than the, the 570 range offers. It's probably not as practical as a GT, but I still think you could use this car every single day, especially with the trick hydraulic suspension meters, setup. Continue on to Calvialetta Del Tady. I should probably shut up this sat nav so I can talk to you properly. <laughs> So we're back. There we have it. Uh, the last two days then I've driven a brand new McLaren, the 570 GT. And today I've been very privileged to be able to jump in a 650S and take that for a blast up the mountain roads. It's hard to compare the two cars because they are totally different brackets. But what excites me about that is if you're in the market for a 570, you should definitely check one out first because I think you'd be absolutely gobsmacked by the fact that that car there, that 570, if you were to just get in one of those on any normal day, you would think, where do you possibly go from here? How, how do they get any more performance and just supercarness out of it? You've got to jump in a 650S and just give it a go. It's, it really justifies its Super Series tag and, and, and for that, I am just super, super excited for the future of this brand. If this is where they are now, such an early stage, whatever is going to come after this, whatever is going to replace 650S, put me down for it because it's absolutely brilliant. Thanks for watching, guys. See you next time. Ciao. It's me. Bye. <laughs>